Hey everybody, thanks for joining me. Um, my name is Abigail Wells and this is the Empty Plate Full Cup podcast. I have on a very special guest today. Uh, it's my mom. We're talking about grief and how to properly deal with grief. My mom and I have both lost a few people recently and so we just wanted to come on and talk about this and hope that it can help all of you. So thanks for listening. Hey, mom. <laughs> Hello again. Hi. Um, so this episode is going to be specifically on grief, how to deal with grief. Um, you and I have both had a lot of loss in the past little while. Um, we lost your husband, my dad, and then we found out a week after dad's funeral that your brother had yeah. passed away. Um, and then a few years ago, you lost your mom, and yeah. last year I lost, um, I mean, we both lost, but my paternal um, grandfather, so dad's dad. Um, so there's just been quite a season. Yeah, there has. <laughs> and it's been quite interesting. Um, so, yeah, I was just, just wanted to sit down and talk. You, you wrote down some great notes about mm, grieving, and yeah. yeah, if you want to just dive in. Yeah, I guess I, I want to hopefully help someone that maybe is either going through this, has been through this, or is about ready to go through this. I hate to say that because that's kind of scary, but we all are going to go through this. This is, death is part of life, unfortunately. Um, I, some of the things I've learned in the last five months, uh, well, it's been kind of like God has had me on a, a accelerated study, <laughs> but it's been good. Um, sometimes the pain is really hard and like the kind of pain I've never felt in my life and I think oh no I don't want to feel like this for the rest of my life but I want to tell you you won't you won't feel like that for the rest of your life but please don't step it down don't try to distract yourself from it go ahead and let yourself feel that pain and and find somebody that you can trust that you can talk with about it that they're not they're not a judgmental person. They're not going to um, expect you to get through it in a certain, you know, period of time. Mm. Uh, that they're going to just listen to you tell your story a hundred times if mm. necessary. Mm. Because every time you tell that story, you're getting a little bit better. Yeah. Um, one of the things I want to say is you have probably had people say some pretty mean things. I want to tell you they don't mean it. Mm. Um, I'm going to say 99.9% .9 of people want to help and they don't, they just don't know what to say. And so if you can remember, they're not saying that to you to hurt you or to try to minimize your pain. They are in a conundrum. They don't know how to handle something like this. And I, when I had people say things to me that were like whoa <laughs> that really hurt mm -hmm. or that was that made me feel really misunderstood which for me is a really hard thing mm -hmm. I had to realize that I've probably done it 150 million times to other people and that kind of brings out um, what God has been showing me through that verse in 2nd Corinthians where it Paul, the apostle, talks about the God of comfort comforts those so they can comfort others. Mm. From day one, that verse has been happening over and over and over in mm. my life for this last five months. And I guess I looked at this time when people would say maybe the wrong thing, according to what I, th what I thought they should say, that it really was God having me in school because he was going to be bringing someone at least someone, at least one person in my life at some point um, that I was going to be able to minister to and take what I learned and maybe maybe say less, maybe listen more, and maybe just be present. Because sometimes I think that's all we really want is just someone even just to sit there with us and yeah. to understand that we're hurting and to not try to fix us, yeah. to let us, you know, to let us hurt. Definitely. It's okay. Yeah. 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 I have definitely found that um, whenever I've had a friend or a coworker that's lost someone, um, I think of a boss that I had who suddenly lost her mother. Um, I brought her a meal because we all did a meal train at, um, at the job, but I was so awkward 
as to like what do I say to her as like what what would make it better like what is a bad thing what is a good thing to say and um and I would just remember how like uncomfortable I was dealing with someone who was dealing with death and through this now I recognize that um oftentimes yeah, people might say stupid things, like you and I both have a few stories of things that people have said, but it's okay. Like, even if someone says something stupid, it'll probably make you feel a little bit better. Mm. Like, or if they just give you a hug, if they just say, I'm yeah. so sorry, yeah. or if they, like, pray with you, you know, yeah. in the in that moment, um, all of those things are really good things. And now, when I find out that someone has lost someone, I'm like, I'm there for it. I'm like, let's do this together i want to get in the trenches with you and just do life even if it's dirty yeah. if it's messy if it's uncomfortable mm-hmm. um because i've gone through that experience and i know that the worst thing that people can do is leave you alone <laughs> yes um and obviously there's a time yeah. to be by yourself right and i know you're very introverted yeah. and i am in a way as yeah. well um but just someone being willing to sit there with you yeah. is like a really really good thing yeah another thing yeah. i would say too is there's this woman who i used to go to church with we now go to different churches but she's she is being she's being jesus with skin on because months and months later she's still sending me things in the mail saying i'm praying for you and because sometimes you feel forgotten like it, everything kind of stops like all the the people knocking on the door and the phone calls and the cards and everything Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden boom there's this little booklet about how it's like step two how to deal with grief and it was right on perfect and for where I was at that point and I'm still praying for you Cheryl and that meant so much to me to know Mm -hmm. I wasn't forgotten yeah yeah that's really really good Yeah, I feel like, um, because I've had it, no one has expressly said this to me, but I've also had a lot of things happen in my life the past few months that haven't just been losing dad and um, my uncle, your brother, a lot of like just people have chosen to leave my life as well. And it's been very difficult. Um, And there's been this mentality from a few people, not like my close friends, but my like ex extended friends or um acquaintances that the the thought has been like oh aren't you over that yet yeah and it's like you get like three months okay you're done you're done (laughs) yeah (laughs) and um, yeah and so just safeguarding yourself Uh, I have a very good friend who is going through a lot she has been diagnosed with um what's known as complex post-traumatic stress disorder and which is different from normal PTSD and she is just so like open and honest with people because there is still very much a stigma about mental health and um and trauma and all of that especially in the christian community um and she's just she's there for it and like Mm. she knows there's people that probably are judging her and she doesn't care yeah and she's just being authentic right and that's something that I've really had to become okay with is just being authentically not okay today Mm -hmm. like I'm just not (laughs) you know um someone asked a question in my small group last week and I just thought it was a really dumb question and I just did not have the mental bandwidth to answer it and I'm like I'm not gonna answer that question if she calls on me I'm gonna say no thank you (laughs) and she didn't actually call on me but (laughs) um and so yeah just being authentic and being like what's the term showing up for yourself which is another one that's a little bit overused maybe but you have to do it well you know you're talking about your friend Mm. i think there there will be people that will be helped a lot by that Mm -hmm. and the more open and authentic we are the more other christians are going to see I can be open and authentic, and that's what the church is supposed to be because Absolutely. that's how we find out someone's struggling with mm-hmm. something and they need someone yeah. to come alongside them and really get in the trenches, yeah. like you said before, it get where it gets really messy. Yeah. This this fake thing, um, we gotta we gotta get away we gotta oh, yeah. get away from that because oh, yeah. that is not that's not helping anyone. No. Yeah. And the mm-hmm. world needs to know we're not just some 
clan that lives by a bunch of rules mm-hmm. why would they want to come live by a bunch of rules <laughs> they need to see the power of christ absolutely in us and the only way they're going to see that is if we really are being real mm-hmm. yeah um the term whitewashed tombs comes to mind yes. and yeah. i think because obviously christianity is becoming more hated in our society mm-hmm. and part of that is just because of the m- like political and um, cultural swing against it and against biblical principles and some of it is because jesus will jesus said we will be hated for our faith and that's okay but some of it is also because of the hypocrisy right um honestly christian principles are really great principles to live by but when people think of the church they think of hypocrites yeah and obviously we're all hypocrites if you have a code you live by you're gonna be a hypocrite at some point in your life but the um the fakery of like pretending that you're not or pretending everything's okay especially because Mm -hmm. then in the darkness sin can creep in and really really harmful sin as well you think of all the statistics of pastors struggling with pornography or affairs Mm -hmm. it's like you're a pastor you shouldn't be struggling with that or or giving into it at least um but we think about that because we think about these people above reproach right. and then we also as christians we know the christian the christianese we can speak yeah. or the legalese and um we we know how to hide like our sin yes. and that just has to stop yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> um yeah so what's your what's your next point i see here about yeah. some victim thinking okay so as a as a widow um what i found that suddenly my my person in my life that was my helpmate he was from a practical point of view he was the fixer of things in the home um there's just you know he we were partners so i lost that part and i found myself at some point in time feeling like a victim and I mean, when you, you, grief is full of different emotions. I remember being so angry at him uh, at different points. And then I remember being so sad. And then, you know, you just go around all these things. But one of the big things for me that's helped me move forward was being very aware if I was starting to think like a victim, like this was done to me and I can't. And if I, if I began to, um, to realize that was what was happening, I could look for just a simple thing to change um, or do, like put myself into something uncomfortable even. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And and frankly, becoming a widow or a widower, there's a lot of stuff that's really uncomfortable that you're going to get thrown into. I would say embrace it. Do it. Mm -hmm. Hey, YouTube is great. There's lots of videos that you can go on and watch and learn how to do something or Um, articles written online on how to handle, you know, financial issues or legal issues, things like that. But just remember that the more you allow yourself to think as a victim, the more ingrained and comfortable it's going to become. Mm -hmm. And then you are going to be a victim. You're just going to stay there and, and very fearful and very anxiety filled. And remember something, if you're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, Um, the word God's word tells us that he didn't give us the spirit of fear so remember fear is really the opposite of faith so just take a leap of faith Mm -hmm. and and do something that's a little bit hard for you you will be amazed at what that does for you to help you feel like you're not a victim and you're going to be okay it's Mm -hmm. very hope uh, inspiring to to do that and when when it's like action it's like we're really it's tangible we're doing something yeah yeah that's really really good Ugh. yeah there is um there's a time for mourning and those times will often ebb and flow um like most days i'm okay and then something will happen um i'll see like a movie that like really upsets me or um or someone will say something that like dad always said and I'll just like lose it (laughs) Um, and it's okay again like honoring yourself in that emotion that is completely fine 
and the more we stuff it then the worse it's gonna get Mm -hmm. like we're always like oh i'll just it'll go away eventually it'll fine it'll be fine i'll just like um grip my teeth through it but no uh if you don't experience it now you're going to experience it later and then you're also going to experience really negative things like raised cortisol levels and then you might actually get physically ill from that um and it's it'll it's just better just to experience it now um obviously you know you might not want to burst down crying for 20 minutes in the grocery store so maybe maybe try to get your teeth through it until you get to the car but again maybe, like maybe maybe, not. maybe, maybe not. not yeah maybe not <laughs> who knows that maybe that goes back to the authenticity yeah, and, yeah. and people going oh yeah let's all cry <laughs> yeah i know right crying's good actually i am a firm believer that crying it just feels really good yeah. <laughs> and it releases stress um i went and my husband and i saw a new movie in the theater the other day and it was very dark and violent i was not a fan um it really i do feel that the holy spirit like um i have a lower tolerance for stuff like that now um but it was also very quote unquote triggering for me because there was a scene um where the main character is having like a really deep moment with his friend and um he's like um like Oh, it's we're rescuing her from like a little prison mm-hmm. and he get, he unlocks the door and she's like, you did it. And they're like having this really deep moment. They're talking about their future. And then she gets shot in the back and like we're sitting in the very back of the theater row K or something. And we're sitting to the right and the shot happens and I could oh, tell what gosh. happened before we even saw it. And I just like started crying i had to like look off to the right like over my shoulder because i knew if i kept looking at the screen or i looked at my husband or i looked at anyone else in the theater it was just gonna be worse and worse and worse and i was like sitting there like hyperventilating crying for like 10 minutes and it was really hard (laughs) um and but like the point is that's okay actually to cry um it's also okay to leave the movie theater and we talked right? about that as an option <laughs> like don't sit there and punish yourself um but it's okay yeah. to cry you know oh, yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah what's the next thing you want to talk about so mm-hmm. we talked we talked about this in our other podcast um life is right now life the lord has something for you and it's actually right now mm. you'll you'll have really well meaning uh, people remind you the lord's got really good plans for you and he does but i think sometimes when you're a, a when you've lost your spouse you think it's going to happen later when i'm healed <laughs> well what i'm finding out is it's part of the healing and he has things for you right now, right this moment. There's someone that he's going to bring across your path and, and try to be aware of that and try to be open to it um, if you can. And also to remember to, um, like, you don't have to wait. You're not on hold mm. waiting for God to do something. He's doing it. He just wants your obedience and your willingness and and trust. And just, it might be a little scary. I am this person that likes all my ducks in in (laughs) order. And I'm finding out that that's not really what the Lord is doing in my life right now. He's really growing me in that area of just being okay with not knowing which is really funny because my husband would be laughing if he knew (laughs) that. So... um, Finding a balance, too, of between, like, taking care of yourself, your emotions, your all the the grieving that you're doing, and and going ahead and doing that, but don't stay there. Mm -hmm. Like, actually become others-focused as well, Mm -hmm. because... It, moving in and out of that, grieving others focused, grieving other, it can be this beautiful dance in mm-hmm. your life. And when you are able to put your focus on someone else, it's very good for you. Mm-hmm. And it and it will be used by the Lord in, in helping to heal you up. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's really, really good. I mean, ultimately, until we are all the other side of heaven or I don't even know how to say that. So we're all, you know, not on earth anymore. Um, We will all go through grief. Mm -hmm. And so even though we all grieve differently and we all um, 
learning about different types of trauma, it's not actually what happened; it's how you internalize what mm-hmm. happened. Um, like we'll all go through that, and so something that has been important for me maybe this is different for you but recognizing that i'm not special (laughs) Mm -hmm. um that i don't have to stay in my own place like i can validate everything that i've gone through in the past five or six months and validate it as pretty serious Mm -hmm. and learn from it and heal from it but i don't have to bear it alone and then I can then, like you're saying, become others focused and help other people heal from their specific trauma because right. they're not special either. They're just people, but yeah. they're different. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's really cool. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think that corresponds to God's word, too. Yeah. And he says that none of us go through anything that's new. Mm-hmm. And that and that also, I guess, goes back to the God of comfort, comforts those so they can comfort others. Mm-hmm. Because when we've been through something where we've experienced it's such a difficult trial where we're we're qualified absolutely yeah 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 Yeah, so what's the next thing you have written here i see well i mean this is jesus being your husband yeah so this is for the widows the ladies out there um you know a lot of women do want to remarry and uh i would just say to you just give yourself time um don't be afraid of being by yourself in that way right now and really press in and ask the Lord to fill the voids for you. He will. He absolutely will. And, you know, he'll even help you to deal with some of the hands-on practical things. I cannot – my prayer life, which was all – very vibrant before I became a widow has become even more vibrant. I pray about almost everything now. Um, w- w- you know, how do I do this? Where do I go for this, Lord? And He's been so faithful to guide me along in that path. And also, I mean, a probably a really important thing to say is honestly, <laughs> for the woman out there who's maybe a new widow. You may not be good for someone else right now. Um, And if you want to remarry someday, you do want to be good for someone else. So just don't rush that. Don't be afraid to be by yourself. Don't be afraid to be lonely. Um, Lonely is not the end of the world, and you're not truly alone. And I know that might sound like, well, I don't feel that way. And I understand that. But um, maybe seek a different kind of friendship in your life if you feel lonely um if if you're more vulnerable to wanting to remarry might be a better idea to not be friends with a man right now and just really press into the lord i actually when my husband died uh i got myself a a inexpensive ring to wear on my my wedding ring finger that is my, I'm married to Jesus now. Mm -hmm. And it's my reminder. It just keeps me focused on him and on this season of my life. Yeah. Yeah. That's really beautiful. Another thing I'll add to that specifically is, um, divorces, uh, Christian women and not Christian women as well. This is a really universal principle, um, for women that have gone through divorce, especially women that have children from that marriage. Um, I have personally known women that have gotten divorced for biblical reasons, actually, but have really gone off the deep end after that and said they were lonely, and I don't doubt that they were lonely. A lot of them were very lonely in their marriage, too, Um, but because of that, they thought, you know, oh, I've healed because I grieved the relationship while I was still in the relationship. Um, None of that is true. If you, if you are telling yourself that that's true, this sounds harsh and I'm only saying it so harsh because I'm on a podcast. If I was actually talking with you face to face, I'd probably say it a lot nicer. Uh, But that's a lie. (laughs) You're, you are (laughs) lying to yourself, honey. Um, It takes so much time Mm -hmm. to really heal from a relationship especially a marriage relationship like if your boyfriend girlfriend that's one thing and i get that um but if you are married especially if you have children um and if you have children do not discount what your kids are going through losing their father and losing just Mm -hmm. the the safety net of 
their their parents being together yeah. um there have been so many kids that have, have come from really like awful marriages like the mom and dad are fighting all the time and when they decide to get a divorce those kids still want their mom and dad to be together yeah. you know yeah um uh, there is something so beautiful about sticking through it with your partner even when you're going through hard times and there is this mantra going around today of oh kids are better off you know with a single mom or a single dad versus a mom and dad are fighting all the time and to that I say okay well get your little stuff together and stop fighting all the time Mm -hmm. um because you are the grown-ups and you decided to do an act that brought those children into the world it's your responsibility yeah um yeah can i add one thing <laughs> yes to that too? <laughs> i'll get off my soapbox um, and let so you on the, the <laughs> other thing it, to add to what abigail was just saying about well the kids would be better off because the parents are fighting all the time i've heard a lot of people say well let's just stay together till the kids are out of the home but you know something you if you divorce your spouse even though your kids are out of the home and they're they're on their own they're providing for themselves they might even be married you will rock their entire yeah. reality like everything they grew up thinking it was now they begin to question what was it mm-hmm. and it it will still really affect them in a yeah. very negative way possibly yeah. even more so